koutou kato, no mai hara mai, and welcome Southwest Baptist Church to your online gathering. We're coming to you from the Chi household, with the beautiful Hunei Park in the background. And this is uh, my friend Bear, say hi Bear. Hi. <laughs> and this is Jason Chi. Got everyone. Um, we're, did you know that our on-site services, our gatherings are not happening this week, so we're all together. Uh, apart while doing this online gathering. So I hope you feel at home. We're feeling home at yeah. home here in your home. We are at home, yeah. <laughs> I hope you're doing the same. So Jason has been around. It feels like I've known Jason for a very, very long time. And um, so I probably know Jason more than you. Jason's part of our new leadership team. And so I said, Jason, I thought, I thought you'd um, be able to take the opportunity to introduce a little bit more about yourself. Obviously, you've got a home here and you've got the yeah. park in the background. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah. Welcome to my, my home, essentially. Um, in this household, it's me, my wife Lizzie, and my two kids, Abriella and Araya. Um, love my family, and we love our wee unit. And Hunei Park, this is our community, Rally Neighbourhood community, I'm part of that. Ooh, I've been part of that for years now, and really enjoy doing life there. Suburbs Rugby Club, best club in Christchurch, potentially New Zealand. Um, I've played for that club, and now I'm currently the club captain. Um, Southwest Baptist, that's been my home for 15 odd years now, even more, I'd say 20 odd years, yeah, as a young fella, um, as this fella was my youth pastor, <laughs> and now to be a, a youth leader, a youth worker, a youth pastor, and now I lead the SYC team, so really fortunate to be doing that, I've been on staff for 13 odd years now, love being part of the life of the Southwest Baptist Church, and uh, yeah, I look forward to the many years ahead as well. Awesome, I'm very really glad that you're part of our team, and I look forward to the journey ahead uh, with you and with us all together. This morning, we've got Katie Kingsway sort of touching on a Palm Sunday. We're a week out from um, Easter weekend. Obviously, Easter weekend's a lot different for you guys uh, with no Easter camp and yeah. no Easter retreat. Yep. So we're really looking forward to whatever shape that is. And obviously, this week's a little different. So, you know, it's so good to just get into the back into the Bible and Katie unpacks a message for us from Matthew 21. Also, we've got our Grego back. And uh, he's got a wee friend there. He does a little bit of ventriloquy. Oh. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, have you done a little bit of ventriloquy with your kids every now and then? Oh, I'd like to, Dwayne, but you set the high, you set the standard very high a couple of weeks ago with your wee sock puck pit, and uh, I don't think I can really match that standard. So, I don't want to give it a go. I don't want to put myself to shame. Yeah, not easy, not easy. Uh, me and old Gregor are right up there yeah, when it comes um, to yeah. ventriloquy. How do I know? <laughs> <laughs> I saw this cartoon come through this week. And um, it's actually a good time to start ventriloquy because if you're wearing a mask, no one really knows how good you are. Oh, so yeah, you might want to give that a go. Sneaky, yeah, I don't know. I'll give that a go later on for kids, for sure. <laughs> kids, you might want to try it with your parents. You know, just try, you know, have, having a wee sock puppet. In fact, you could even try it with your pet. Perhaps not. <laughs> I think into that. Okay, shall we, shall, we, shall we press on? Let's get comfortable for the service today. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this morning. Lord God, we just want to acknowledge you and just be reminded how amazing you are, how powerful you are, um, that you truly are um, our Father in heaven who loves us so dearly much, Lord. We just pray for this morning, as much as we can't meet on site, Lord, we can still meet together, and that's an amazing thing. So Father, be with us, may our ears, may our hearts be open to what Katie is sharing with us. Um, yeah, and let's just really enjoy the service together. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. One, two, three, four.
This is El Grego from Southwest Baptist. Welcome children, mums and dads. Today I'm joined by Doris the donkey. Yay! Yes, he is a donkey. And what are you? What am I? Yeah. Oh, I'm what they call a, today, a ventriloquist. Ah, oh, you're a vanilla twist. No, not a vanilla twist. That's an ice cream. I'm a ventriloquist. What's that? What's that? Yeah. It's someone who can throw the voice. Where? Where? Yeah. To you. When? When? Yeah. Now. Uh, I just did it. Uh, yeah. I'm not doing it again. Uh, Being a ventriloquist. Uh, Somebody can throw the voice. Uh, uh, to you. Uh, now. Uh, I just did it. Uh, again. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, anyway, we've got to move along. Today, our scriptures are from Matthew 21. It's all about me. It's all about you. Yeah. Uh, oh, it is about you. It says here, Jesus said, go get the donkey. Yay! And its baby. Right on. And if anyone asks anything, tell them the Lord needs them. That's right. They did this to fulfill the prophecy. Tell Jerusalem the king is coming riding on a donkey. Right on. They sure did. The disciple did this. And then they threw their garment over the donkey. Well, it's easier to ride that way. It is easier to ride that way. And the crowd threw their garments on the road. And the branches. And the branches were spread out in front of them to walk along the road. Large crowds went before him. And others pressed behind, shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna to the Son of David! Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna! Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! That's what they kept calling out. Arriving in Jerusalem, folk asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, It is the prophet, Jesus of Nazareth in Galilee. They sure did. Hey, that's a good story. I, I know a song about that. Really? Yeah, it goes like this. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Not bad. I think I know that one too. <laughs> Do you? I sure do. Anyway, we're disappearing for now. Thanks for joining us. Have a good week. See ya. Kia ora koutou. My name is Grace. I'm part of the global team here, but I'm also part of the Eddington neighborhood community. Um, this month is the month of Ramadan for many Muslims all around the world who celebrate. Um, uh, they'll mark this time by fasting and by praying. It's a time of um, committing themselves to um, their faith and their devotion to their faith. It's time of committing themselves to it, each other and it's time of remembering their commitment to the poor. So um, let us pray today. E te atua, you are God of all. You call us to love our neighbour as you do. Transform our hearts and fill us with your love, so that by our actions, words and thoughts, we will be the neighbours that you call us to be. Today we pray for our Muslim communities here in Aotearoa and around the world during the month of Ramadan. We pray for them during this time. May they sense the gentle call of your spirit. May they come to know more of who you are. May you draw them closer to you and reveal the goodness of your love. We know that around the world there are many Muslim groups who face persecution and alienation. We pray for an end to this. In its place, we pray for the seeds of peace and justice to be sown. And God, as your church, give us open hearts and open ears. Help us to listen to your voice and to learn from others. Give us expensive hearts which love our neighbour as you call us to do. In your name, Amen. If love is found in the people, then peace will come to the land. Let love be found in this people. Aroha mai, aroha atu. If love is found in the people, then peace. Let it 
Good morning, everybody. Um, it is really, really lovely to be here with you all this morning, even virtually. Um, I'm actually gonna get James to take a photo of my current setup because I have to confess, this is um, not quite as professional as I would try and be in person. Um, I'm currently sitting on three cushions on top of like a footrest puff thingy um, with my phone stacked up on a bunch of candles on top of a box of James's Lego. Um, and that's okay, because what's awesome is that even in the chaos, um, we can still meet and we can still spend time together um, with God and each other, um, even if it is virtually. So, um, hi day my welcome. Uh, welcome to my wee house, uh, my wee corner of the world. Um, and I'm really excited to be here with you all this morning. So, um, when I was given the verses to speak on today, I started reading Matthew 21. Um, and I got to the section where Jesus goes to the temple and he starts flipping the tables and he starts challenging the religious elite and I was so stoked. Um, I love the image of a revolutionary God, one who is more concerned with relationship than religion, um, who speaks truth to power and empowers the vulnerable. And I could start to see the message forming and being one that I just love of a rebellious king of justice and all that kind of good stuff. And then I realized I'd read too far. I was meant to cover uh, the verses before that section, the ones where the main themes I could see were humility and obedience. And I don't know if you have those moments where you think, yep, God has a very good sense of humor. Um, but that was one of those moments for me. Uh, and so with a bit of humility um, and obedience on my part, I dived into the section um, I was asked to speak on and found these three key things I want us to try and take away from this message. So firstly, obedience. Secondly, humility. And finally, that God is in control even when it may seem that he is not. Um, we're going to start by reading the passage and then we'll take a closer look at some of those themes. So this is Matthew 21, 1 to 11, and it's taken from the message version. It's titled The Royal Welcome, but in many of the other translations, it speaks about the triumphant arrival. And it reads, 
When they neared Jerusalem, having arrived at Bethpage on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, say, the master needs them. He will send them with you. This is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophet. Tell Zion's daughter, look, your king's on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey, on a colt, foal of a pack animal. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and colt out, laid some of their clothes on them, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down on the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed, all of them calling out, Hosanna to David's son, blessed is he who comes in God's name. Hosanna in highest heaven. As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. Unnerved, people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? The parade crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth. In Galilee. So before we dive kind of fully into obedience, I have to make a small um, admission. And that is that I have uh, historically um, and occasionally currently struggled with obedience. I remember in my early teens um, getting very frustrated by being told to brush my teeth before I went to bed. So I concocted this brilliant plan. Um, where I would go into the bathroom, I would sit in there for a couple of minutes uh, and I would come out and claim my teeth were brushed. And my dad is not stupid. Uh, he started asking why he hadn't heard my electric toothbrush going. Well played by him, I thought. <laughs> um, but I had many a move left up my sleeve. Uh, so the next time I went into the bathroom, I stood there, I turned my electric toothbrush on left it on, stood there holding it for a couple of minutes. My dad must have caught it on to this because he said, well, let me smell your breath. Again, well played, I thought. And it got to the point where I would go in, I would hold my toothbrush, put a tiny bit of toothpaste in my mouth so it smelled minty fresh. Um, I would turn the tap on and off and I would do all of this without actually brushing my teeth. It must have taken me just as much time, uh, probably twice as much effort, and all because I just didn't want to do what I was told. I look back on that and um, whilst it's rather funny, uh, it does amaze me the lengths I went to uh, to avoid doing what my father knew was best. And I don't know if you've done anything quite like that. Um, but I imagine we've all got stories of different ways that we have tried to, I could say carve our own path, um, but more accurately probably just not do what we're told. In contrast, this section around Jesus' arrival to Jerusalem mentions obedience multiple times. So over the last few weeks, we've been looking at the days and hours just before Jesus' crucifixion. But for today, we've wound it back a little bit. Uh, we're the week before, and Jesus is entering Jerusalem knowing full well what is to come. I can't comprehend the obedience that Jesus is showing. To enter a town knowing it is where you will be killed. Uh, to allow yourself to be greeted by people who would soon turn against you. And that is all because he trusts in the plan of God. And we know that Jesus struggles with this plan, that ultimately he probably wishes that there was another way. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. I think to enter Jerusalem knowing the outcome is Jesus showing us the most extreme and yet powerful example of obeying God. But Jesus also asks the disciples to obey him. Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. 
go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them to me. The disciples went and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. So for me now, I want you to imagine the queen. And for some bizarre reason, you'll just have to go along with it, um, you have found yourself with the queen. Uh, she's trying to get to Buckingham Palace and she tells you not to worry about getting her royal carriage. Instead, she'll ride a donkey. I know if she asked me to grab her a donkey, I would probably protest. She's the queen, right? She can't ride a donkey. Um, I imagine that the disciples actually felt similar. People of power and influence at the time rode these big, beautiful horses uh, that wore shields and gold and all kinds of fancy horse stuff. And here is Jesus, their king, the person they believe is the ultimate power and influence, asking them to fetch him a donkey. And yet they obey. And finally, Jesus says to them, if anyone asks what you're doing, say the master needs them. He will send them to you. He's basically saying, if a random stranger asks you what on earth you're doing, um, borrowing a donkey, tell them because I said so, and they will obey. And if we go back to those delightful teenage years of mine, uh, because I said so very rarely worked. Uh, very rarely compelled me to do what I was told if it came from my parents. And yet Jesus is saying, tell these strangers that I need them because I said so, and they will listen and they will obey. So in this passage, we see Jesus obeying his father. We see the disciples obeying their master and we see strangers obeying their Lord. Perhaps uh, there is a challenge in that for you as much as there is for me. Next up, uh, we have the theme of humility. Uh, we've already touched on it a little bit with Jesus riding in on a donkey. And I love this picture of it. He is glorious in his humility. And this passage is leading us into the final chapters, so to speak, of Jesus' time on earth in human form. So it's poetic that he finishes as humbly as he started. And we all know the Christmas story of the King, the Saviour, the Lord of all creation, um, riding on a donkey to Bethlehem in his mother's stomach, being born in a stable to an unmarried woman of the utter humility in that entrance. And now we see in the Easter story, Jesus choosing to begin his final week humbly riding again on a donkey towards his death. So my Nana um, is a big fan of the royal family. And I grew up watching documentaries about the Queen Mother, um, the royal weddings, and there was one very exciting movie uh, based on the love story of Kate and Wills. Ah, it's wonderful. Um, and the royals know how to make an entrance, right? So a couple of random facts for you. Princess Diana's wedding dress contained over 10,000 pearls and had a train that was more than 25 feet long. The crown that Queen Elizabeth wore on the way to her coronation contains 1,333 diamonds and 169 pearls. And the wedding cake of Kate and William uh, is estimated to have cost $80,000. And they had two. Um, this is the royalty that we are accustomed to seeing. And whilst it might have looked slightly different in Jesus' day, uh, this picture here gives us a bit of an idea of what power looked like back then. And yet instead of all of the pompousness or fancy clothes or soldiers, Jesus rode a donkey. Jesus was humble, not just when no one was looking, but when everyone was looking. On his triumphant royal entrance into Jerusalem, he was the epitome of a servant king. 
Uh, finally, I want us to reflect on how God is always in control. Sometimes we might confuse obedience and even humility with weakness. And yet this passage reminds us, it makes sure to show us that whilst Jesus is obedient and humble, he is also in complete control. A number of biblical scholars actually think that there were two donkeys and Jesus rode the colt, uh, the baby one, who had never been ridden before. Now, many of you will have pets. Um, you can see a couple of my gorgeous uh, family collies uh, behind me. Um, you'll understand that animals don't necessarily do what you want at the best of times, let alone baby animals, uh, and especially not around lots of noise, people, and chaos. And yet this baby donkey carries Jesus calmly through the crowds, and it reminds us that it is carrying the God who created the heavens and the earth who knows every creature by name. He may be humble riding a donkey, but he is powerful. He is in control. Jesus throughout his life also tends to avoid attention most of the time. He certainly isn't seeking it out. And yet in this section, he deliberately and intentionally acts in a way that he knows will get the attention of the people. So remember it says, this is the full story of what was sketched earlier by the prophet. Tells Aaron's daughter, look, your king's on his way, poised and ready, mounted on a donkey. In entering Jerusalem on a donkey, Jesus fulfills the prophecy. He gets their attention by doing exactly what they've been waiting for. And the passage goes on to say, as he made his way into, sorry, as he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. Unnerved, people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? And the parade crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus knew that how and when he entered Jerusalem would be significant. He isn't leaving things to chance. It isn't a coincidence that he rides a donkey. He is the fulfillment of a prophecy, an answer to prayer. He is a humble human and a powerful God. Um, to finish, I would love us to pray together as we enter this week leading up to Easter. Uh, dear Lord, when we think of Easter, we think of your sacrifice. When we think of that now, and in a way that will never measure up, we thank you for its gift. And yet today we also remember your life and all that it can teach us. Uh, may we too be humble, willing to serve others and to put what truly matters ahead of what looks good. May we be willing to put our faith into action by obeying your commands. We pray this does not feel like a burden, but instead the gift of a father who sees more, knows more than we can. And may we never forget that you are in control, that you are God above all and God of all. And finally, Lord, as we eat a lot of chocolate this week, may we remember the gifts you've given us, your death and your life, the sweetest of them all. Amen.
Okay, we're drawing to a close. Um, I hope you're able to sort of press pause during that global prayer and just pray for all the things that are on your heart. In a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity in your spaces to interact with one another and with God in response to Katie's message. First of all, though, do you remember doing the breath test with the kids when they went so, when you weren't so sure they'd done their teeth? Yeah, definitely. I still do it now. Do you really? Yeah. Even in the car driving to school, oh, you didn't brush your teeth this morning. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Anyway, that was particularly sneaky, Katie. Uh, but you mentioned three things. Um, obedience, humility, and God's control of things. And um, those are three worthy things for us to contemplate and to discuss. So as I like to do, I thought we'd just even just in, the, in this on online format, have a little bit of quiet, a little bit of alone space, and then I want to invite you to just turn to the person you are uh, sitting next to and have a discussion on one or all three of those points that stood out and sort of what God might be saying to you about one or all three of those points. But first of all, let's let the stillness of our own heart, as we heard about um, from Steve last week, that, that's silence. So let's just um, let silence be a friend and let God speak to us. I mean, okay. you might want to press pause and just turn and discuss and then come back for our, our wrapping thoughts. We're going to go through a few notices and then the benediction. Amen. Amen. Let's <laughs> 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 do that again. Let's do that again. Amen. Okay, so we're going to do some notices and then move on to the benediction. This week is going to be super interesting. Honestly, you guys have had COVID in your house. Yeah. Um, we've had it in our house. It sort of seems to be quite a bit of a bingo experience. Suddenly your number's up. And so we're just going to go with the flow. I feel particularly prepared for the week ahead. So how do you think it's going to roll this week? And what have we got on offer? We've got four things on offer for us this week coming. Friday and Sunday services online and on site. If you're on site, please get registered, but check out the website for more details. We've got these Easter boxes that you can do as a whanau if you're on holiday, if you're in your house. Um, I believe there's reflection cards, there's liturgies, and most importantly, is it most importantly? I think there's chocolate in there for the kids, or for the adults. I've been waiting for whole of Lent for chocolate. Oh, like even last night, I turned down so much chocolate last night, so I can't wait for Wayne's chocolate be selling the, the Easter chocolate box. In his box. <laughs> and then the lastly, SYC, we don't have the Easter camp this year, but we're going to run our own way. Easter retreat on the 15th to 17th at Hibbert Park for our year 12s and year 13s and our SYC leaders. It'll be really exciting, some really good content. So get registered once again, follow the website for more info. And very specially, we've got the art installation, which we're going to try and run on the day that this, this online gathering is released. You might want to check that online because we might be able to even have the installation open today. That's the Sunday, oh, yeah. which would be, I think, the 10th of April. And certainly next weekend as well, and it's got the Stations of the Cross. So, four things. Stations of the Cross, art installation, SYC Easter Retreat, online and on site. <laughs> We've got it covered. It's going to be great. So, um, yeah, and I must say too, the, the, besides our gathering and, and com coming together experiences, we've also had a lot of community care, and I know that you've experienced amazing yes. community care. I think while we were probably less symptomatic in our household, you guys have had the full... Yeah, we got taken out pretty, pretty terribly. Yeah. yeah, so you've had the rally, neighbourhood wrap around, and also I hope workplace as well. But also, I know that we've got the community care that comes in underneath that. So please do avail yourself of that. It is a time to care, and um, let's not be too proud or independent to put up our hand for help. We are there to help each other on the journey, so sure. do that. And once again, I just want to shout out to those local connectors who have done the job, like even this week, those Easter boxes have been delivered to like 50 or even 100 families this week. So um, local connectors, thank you so much. Um, you are providing a, a baseline, um, the root system for us as a church to be there for our people and our places. So thank you for that. Um, thank you very, very much. Well, we'll do the benediction very shortly. Uh, it's coming to us from the, the gathering team. team. Yeah, exciting. So we'll pass you on to the gathering team to lead us in the benediction. All right. Ka God bless. See you later. Go well. Seek peace. Uh, kia ora, we're the gatherings team and we're going to say uh, the benediction together.
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Amen. Kia to, kia tato katoa, te atawhai o tō tato ariki a ihu karaiti. Me te aroha o te atua, me te fifi na tahitana, ki te wairua tapu. Ake, ake, ake. Amen. Oh, oh, oh.